Um, my name is Ben Jackson. I make iPhone apps, among many other things. Uh, part of my job making iPhone apps involves user experience design. So uh, that involves a lot of things from behavior and cognitive psychology and a lot of data collection about users. So today I'm going to talk about our brains. Uh, our brains are really, really complex. We didn't know a whole lot about what makes people tick until about the last century or so. But what we do know is really, really fascinating and very, very useful for user experience designers. One of the things we've learned, people are horrible multitaskers. Um, <laughs> this was a profound realization which had very, very significant, significant <laughs> implications for public policy, traffic law, workplace productivity, etc. Um, Charles Witt Telford was one of the pioneers of multitasking research. He did a study where he sat his students down in front of a telegraph key, had them press it after two sounds were played, and then varied the distance. So when the sounds are close together, the reaction time for the latter actually slows by about a tenth of a second. Uh, we really can't concentrate on more than two things at once. Um, but we don't always want to concentrate. So for example, David Barlow theorized that sexual anxiety, uh, sorry, focusing on anxiety caused uh, sexual dysfunction. Uh, anxiety actually improves performance in most people. Anyone ever here ever have sex in a dangerous situation? Y'all know what I'm talking about. So, so Barlow took a look, right, thank you. So Barlow took a look at arousal over time. This is a, a measurement from a strain, a strain gauge, which is a, an electroconductive metal band tied on the shaft of the penis. And he found that actually people, when they're distracted, will perform better if they have sexual dysfunction, but they'll perform worse in the control group. Um, distraction, like I said, distraction's always a bad thing. Uh, if you give people a game to play while they're waiting a long running task, it makes them a lot less pissed off. Doctors know this too. They always stock their waiting rooms with lots of magazines. Um, 1930, Burris Frederick Skinner invented a, a device called the Operant Conditioning Chamber, which is really just a fancy name for a box with a lever hooked up to a stimulus. Uh, you hook that lever up to a dish of food, a rat will uh, eat and gorge itself on food pellets. However, you hook two levers up, make one deliver food and the other deliver narcotics, through a vein in the jugular, that rat is not going to last very long. Um, <laughs> about 700 times per hour, that rat will dose itself with drugs till it dies of malnourishment and exhaustion. However, David Barlow found that if you take that same junkie rat out of its cage, put it in a nicer cage with lots of food and water, then it ignores the drugs. And he theorized that, well, those rats weren't junkies, the drugs weren't the problem, they were just really, really depressed from the cages. Um, the designers at Zynga are very, very well aware of the research in behavioral psychology. They use a lot of techniques like gifting, which leverages the reciprocity effect. I give you a gift, you want to give me a gift. Um, they use random payouts like slot machines and casinos. Um, I'm going to move on to mind readers. Mind readers are excellent at cold reads. These people aren't really psychics. They're just really good at reading your body language, looking at your clothes. Uh, they see a, a man tan on your finger. They'll say, oh, that guy's probably having marriage trouble. Um, they also look at your shoes. Everybody, look at the shoes of the people around you here. Just look at the shoes, seriously, I'm not joking. 90% um, of your guesses about the person sitting next to you based on their shoes will be right, according to a study at the University of Kansas this year. Uh, people in high tops are less agreeable. People in uncomfortable shoes are calmer. Um, our faces also give us away. <laughs> it's, this, this, the jokes just write themselves, don't they? Um, <laughs> There's a field called microexpressions that looks at fleeting facial expressions, which are really useful when you're testing because people, if there's one time when people like to hide their feelings, it's when they're user testing. So if you hook up a webcam, this is an app called Silverback that does just that. You hook up a webcam, you can check for signs like widened eyes, furrowed brows that indicate confusion, surprise, whatever. I'm gonna finish by talking about happiness, guys. Happiness is extremely, extremely weird. Money correlates very strongly with happiness up to a point and then it drops off. What really makes people happy is sex. I'm not, I'm not kidding, you, you go from having sex once a month to once a week, and it's equivalent to about a $50,000 a year raise in happiness. <laughs> That's a study from science, right? Uh, another study, Martin Seligman put a bunch of dogs in a box with randomly timed shocks. This is a Skinner box, and he told the dog, he, he, some of the dogs could control the, sh the shock with the, the lever, some of them couldn't. The ones who couldn't, when he put them in another box that was partially open, and shock them, they didn't try to escape, they just lied down whining. And users are in the same boat as these dogs with this kind of garbage, right? So we can help our users, they don't have to feel trapped in the box of idiocy that we put them in. We can treat them with respect, we can treat them with kindness, we can treat them the way we ourselves would like to be treated, and if we do this, we will make our users happy. That's it, my name is Ben Jackson. Thank everybody for coming out, thank the organizers. Uh, I am available for work inquiries, so if you reach out to me on Twitter, I promise I'll reply.